most of you realize that the uh, the founder of Omni, of course, is Mr. Dick Bennett. And I Dick Bennett is, is uh, he's, he's such a mentor to so many of us, and uh, I admire him greatly for many reasons. Um, but today, this is kind of, we're going to cut down and throw things off you know, out of kilter. Normally, he's done a lot of research and, and give you a lot of facts about something. But uh, today, I'm, it's going to be a little more personal. Um, actually, you know, being a vegetarian is not something that has to happen in an overnight. Sometimes, vegetarian is something that happens gradually. Um, and it, everybody has their own way of reaching that place, or not, but any or any degree of it. You know, it, like Rick Don and I love that word flexitarian. <laughs> you know, and because it all benefits every time. Any time we reduce the amount of animals we're eating, the lower we eat on the food chain, the the better the situation is. More, well, more sustainable. and more sustainable. So, so you know what? What we've asked Dick to do is a little unusual. Is you know. Um, you know, Dick, Dick is um, getting up in there in years. Like, what are you, like 60 years old? Or? I'm not sure. 65. I'm trying to think how old, yeah. And, and you know, but he is living proof because he's, he's become a vegetarian since we've known Dick just in recent years. And uh, it's been a process. It didn't happen overnight. And uh, I think a lot of people in here probably t think about this very issue at times. And I thought it might be helpful uh, to, to get some, some, some feedback from somebody who's go, gone through it and actually been there, done it, and, and successfully. So I'd like to ask Ms. one of my more, best friends in the world, Mr. Dick Bennett, out here. Tony Donna asked me to speak tonight five minutes. You cannot understand what that means to a college professor. <laughs> But when they said, it's about your own life, I thought, I can do that in five minutes. <laughs> it's not that like the romantic poets I once talked. So where to begin? I have chicken, some of you know. I fight chicken. And they're surrounded by predators. So one of the first chickens I had, before I had a full protection over the top, was attacked by a predator in the middle of one night. I rushed out. The chicken was still alive. I brought her in. Began then to, the next day, to call the uh, veterinarians. There are no veterinarians for chickens in the <laughs> But in Springdale, I found one female veterinarian who would at least advise me. And she said, virtually, just get this uh, medicine, which turned out to be iodine, I think, and just pour it on her two or three times, because there was a large hunk out of her breast. Well, I couldn't handle that by myself, so a neighbor came to hold the chicken while I poured the iodine on her. That neighbor became a vegetarian instantaneously. <laughs> Now, I don't think that Don and Kelly knew that story because that's really the illustration of my story because I think really they want me to tell my life story for you all to shun it because it took me so long. And I'm a little older than 60. When I lived in Bellingham, Washington in 1962, I met a biologist in, at the at Western Washington State University. He would not serve beef or chicken to his children in 1962. He explained uh, to me one night that the chickens and the beef were, were full of hormones and pesticides and other toxic matters. So in 1962, he, he knew what we know now. And so that began to bother me, and it was stuck in a portion of my brain. It was revolving around, but I did nothing about it. As the years went on, I began to read more about animals. I, I read 
a biography of Albert Schweitzer by Louis Fisher. And that added a little, a few other circuits in my, in my brain because he taught reverence for life and worried about killing any sentient creature all the way back to bacteria, which he had to do because he was a medical doctor. And then, of course, in a few years later, I was reading Gandhi and was quite affected by his passionate uh, argument for ahimsa, a meaning not, himsa meaning kill, not killing. So it was gathering, things were happening in my mind. And then, as it seems now, almost cataclysmically it's happening, it's happening rapidly, I began in 2005 reading about global warming and CO2, climate change. The first book I read on this was in 2005. And it was a book I, I do remember the title of, and forgotten most of the others, uh, but The Weather Makers by Tim Flannery. He did not discuss anything about meat or, or about animals, but he discussed other momentous things about, about warming. And so here my brain began to be filled uh, with nutritional and health matters, with protection of animals. Oh, and I began to read and see films about the closeness of friendships across species, if that's possible. And maybe it would be possible for humans to be friends, too. <laughs> <laughs> and it had been global warming uh, made it so urgent that I could not deny it any longer. But somewhere along in that time, I don't know when, it was so gradual, I quit eating meat. Thank you very much. <laughs>